Hi Naviu, welcome to one of the brand uh, new episode of my YouTube channel. So thank you for uh, taking your time and join, uh, joining my um, short podcast that I'm going to hold. So I hope that you will have. Okay, I hope that you will have great time uh, just discussing. So you need not have to be very strict or something. Okay, just a casual talk. So first question okay. is, uh, although I know you, but most of my viewers may, uh, may not know you. So just introduce yourself like. Uh. Okay, thank you, my friend, Rishinge, for inviting me, for giving you this wonderful chance. Uh, when I come to the question, my name is uh, Nebi Yu Samuel, and uh, I'm current, currently studying software engineering at Delhi Technological University. So like originally, I'm from Ethiopia and uh, I have been enrolled in Delhi Technological University. So I'm an international student here. Okay, uh, that was very brief and uh, very uh, clear introduction that I've heard. And then uh, once again, thank you very much for joining my um, short podcast or interview. So uh, I don't have a very complex question to ask you today, but uh, I will ask you some simple questions, okay? So, um, one of my first questions that I wanted to ask, I'm very eager to ask to everyone is, how did you uh, get enrolled in Delhi Technological University? I mean, the, some of the procedures that you have to follow, like some exams that you have to clear like that before getting scholarship to this college. So what are the procedures did you, um, do you, have, you had to follow and then uh, what are the main motivators that uh, motivated you to just join as an international student in India? Okay, this is a very nice question. Uh, first of all, I have enrolled in Delhi Technological University through Indian Council for Relationship Scholarship. And uh, this uh, Delhi Technological University is a top university in India with a world class facility and eminent faculty. Uh, so, like when I applied for this scholarship, I have to see the top university in India and I have to make my own choice. So as uh, DTU offers undergraduate, postgraduate and doctoral programs in a wide range of disciplines. So I chose Delhi Technological University so that I had secured, I had secured admission in DTU, uh, Bachelor of Software Engineering through so ICR scholarship is in. And uh, as a uh, part of the, pro the program, I will be spending uh, four years in Delhi after which I have to acquire a work visa to stay in India or return to my country to complete the degree. Okay, okay. That's, that was um, very, uh, just uh, like some kind of steps that you have to follow. So actually it is um, for different types of country or like different scheme, we have different, different type of procedures that we have to follow, no? So uh, yes. that's, uh, that's very nice and uh, it is very honor to meet you like we are friends and we are in this college. So it's very honored to meet you from my side. So now the, the same. one of the, um, now again, one of the uh, question that come in mind is like, how did you feel like when you first uh, came out from the plane, like to India, how did you feel like, wh what are the different atmospheres you have experienced or like some uh, something like that? What did you, what feelings uh, it came in your mind when you first step out from the plane in uh, airport. Uh, the feeling is like uh, it is different feelings as an international student. There are like many challenges that uh, my may face. Like this include uh, there is a language barrier, cultural differences, and I can feel these all feelings the first time I arrive because in my country. If we take the weather, for example, the weather is very hot here all over the India, but in my country, the weather is not hot like here. So the first feeling, the, the very feeling I felt is that India is hot during summer season, since I came here during summer season. So that feeling uh, didn't stay that much because as I get stay in India, I get used with this weather. These are uh, different feelings I uh, had feel at that time. Okay. Actually, yeah, this also happened same with me. You know, like uh, in at around March when we came first to this college. In my country, it's a bit cold, but like I uh, have worn that thick jacket 
and then I came and <laughs> the moment I got out from the plane, it was very hot. Immediately I have to remove that coat. And the like you said, the atmosphere is like um, it's not like it's always some kind of foggy, na. No? There's lots of pollution there. Actually, um, that's the similar feeling that I also got like you. Actually, you have covered most of the rest of questions, but uh, for uh, clarity and I will ask uh, some of these specific questions, okay? So, um, okay. my next question is, what are some of the culture shocks that you got like? Culture shocks means the difference in culture, like in terms of food, the clothes they wear, the language they speak here and your country. What kind of a transition you got? What kind of sudden change in the way you live? What what have you experienced about that? Some cultural shocks. Can you just tell me? Yeah, as I have told you, like there might be cultural difference wherever you go around the world. Right? In the these big world, right? there are different the diversified cultures and the diversified food types. So, like as I move from one country to another, this is the uh, one must feel. So. The feeling I had at that moment was very different and it's very difficult. Like, for example, the food here may not, I may not adapt with the food here <laughs> immediately yeah. as I arrive here. So I have to take time to adapt with this new food, this cultures and all. So it might be challenging, but I get used and I have managed it. Yeah, actually now it is almost uh, three years or la that we came and then yeah. most of the time in COVID time also uh, you have survived here. So now uh, almost within three years, I hope that you have uh, now able to shift to the culture, I guess. Huh? So one thing, what are some of the challenges that you have faced? What are some of the challenges you have faced or facing here? Actually, actually you have told like language barrier is one of the... So can you elaborate more about that? What kind of challenges you face as, a interna as an international student in our college? Okay, this is very uh, crucial question. As an international student, uh, there are many challenges that uh, one may face. This can include language barriers, cultural differences, and the financial difficulties also. Uh, like yeah. adapting <laughs> to an uh, educational system, and making new uh, new friends can also be difficult. Yeah, sure. Uh, additionally, uh, international students may also find it challenging to find uh, whether the hostel is good or living outside. There is a big you have to make uh, your own decision to choose between these. So, like, there are many uh, big challenges. For example, like feel there is a feeling of isolated. Yeah, yeah. These challenges can be overwhelming, but with the right support and the resources, the national student can successfully overcome them and make most of their study abroad experience. Yeah, okay. That's also like this. Almost all international students, including us, face similar kind of um, yeah. challenges here. Now, um, just I'm eager to ask, like, what are your future plans? Like, uh, what will you do after you graduate from this college? or? Like, what are the future plans? What are you thinking to do and spend your rest of the life? Actually, uh, I'm very excited about the opportunities and the challenges that lie ahead in the field of software engineering. And like, I'm looking forward to applying what I have learned to help okay. in the That's company nice. to solve nice. real world problems. So, like, I'm excited about my future, but I don't know what it can what uh, the time will bring uh, because I'll be spending uh, four years in Delhi after which like I have to appear and work in visa to stay in India or return to my country to serve my society. Okay, so uh, as you came as a scholarship, like a uh, scholar, no, you got in, you got in scholarship, so your country might have huge expectations from you. So what kind of potential yeah. expectations your country, my your country, your people uh, will have on you. Like what kind of uh, expectations they might have on you after uh, like, I have learned the principle and the practices uh, in India, like how they have reached this stage. So like so that I can also bring these changes in my country. So 
like if I'm suc- I, I will be successful, like I can provide my society with this knowledge and uh, skills I have got from here. So which must be very useful to play a big role in develop in development of my country. So this is what my society also expect from me. Not only from me, every uh, scholar yes, will be yes. expected to do all these things. Yes, yes. I feel also like we also have that similar kind of expectation that all people will hold. So I mean, that's so nice that uh, you you are planning to you are trying to get skills that will um, you can apply in your field for the good of humanity in your country. So now, last uh, the one, uh, some of the uh, the final question is like. Um, you have anyone to congratulate anything anything you 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 have to thank to if you have anyone to thank for your support that they have given or like any people to congratulate acknowledge them i just offer you some opportunity uh, like i want to thank uh, all my families and uh, all my friends who supported me through all this uh, of my journey when I was applying for this scholarship to get admission in the technology university. It is not only my effort that uh, brought this to me and they are my friends behind me who helped me and supported me while I was going through this journey. So I want to thank all of my friends who were with me during my difficulties and my happy times. So like, I want to Thank all my friends and the families, as well as you, for giving me this uh, opportunity <laughs> to talk and to thank all of these people. So, thank you. So, uh, one question that came in my mind just now is like, previous, uh, previous like in 2021, 2020, our classes were in offline, online mode. And then in 2022, finally, at the beginning, our classes have shifted to offline. So what do you think, uh, how, what is the feeling you, got, you get by do, doing engineering? Like, what kind of feeling, like, is very hard? What kind of feeling you get as an engineer, engineering student in our college, like, in DTU? What kind uh, of feeling like, you get? As you have mentioned, like, uh, since we have started uh, and uh, this, uh, our degree, graduate degree, we have uh, uh, we have been following two uh, uh, systems. First, the first one was when we first admitted in this college, we were following our classes through online mode, and after that, now we have already started offline mode, and there are big differences in offline and online models. Uh, actually. Uh, during online, like we don't attend classes that much, we don't give attention for classes, but we can manage every exams as <laughs> since yes, 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 definitely. taking the exams and all through online, it must be very smooth. Yeah, like, I also remember are, that uh, uh, doing all exams uh, without studying also, just googling and yeah, but now it's very but also as this. Also, there is a simple procedure here, like there are also some difficulties doing online itself so, because we have to make a project for every and each subject that yeah, we have to study. That's, and that's one thing. This is the difficult part uh, from online semester as we have only three uh, exams and we have to cover all of other uh, labs, uh, other by making this project so that must be like okay. the, the hard hard part for us and when we come to this offline mode like there are final exams and the midterm exams and we haven't been used get used with this type of exams during online semester and this must this must have very challenging yeah. for us by the way we did f- all, our we are, first time we experienced previous same, no? social life so the good thing in offline semester is that we have started to experience social and college life. Yeah, okay, okay. So now uh, it's finally to wrap up now. Any last messages you want to add a, as an advice to your juniors, younger ones, those who wish to pursue engineering career or any last messages like? 
actually I don't have much to say like uh, what I, I I want to give uh, advice for my uh, younger stars are like you have to have a strong foundation to stay in engineering so as engineering is not as like engineering is very broad subject and it is not only like it is uh, very you need to work hard to study engineering it's not easy as you might yeah. uh, some of you might think so like have a strong foundation that is what i want to say to yeah, my youngsters that's very important because um it's not like we have thought like it's very easy or we can do like that no but um when the exam exam we have to be extra hard working to achieve that because if you don't study it's obvious that we will get low marks or we will fail so sure, uh, with sure. this uh, now uh, is now our uh, i mean now it's time to wrap up so thank you for joining It was very fun to have conversation with you. So thank you very I much also for joining. Thank you and I appreciate you so much because you have given me to share my feelings and uh, to give some of my experiences. I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very Again. much. Okay, we'll meet you <laughs> in college. <laughs> okay, okay. Bro. Thank you. Thank you.